This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers. In today's world, Islam is presenting a violent side to its theological expression. A segment of Middle Eastern Muslims have adopted a fundamentalist jihadi approach, which simply means holy war, and they justify it right from the very pages of the Quran itself. For example, the Quran teaches, and I quote, They do blasphemy who say, Allah is Christ, the Son of Mary. In blasphemy indeed are those that say that Allah is Christ, the Son of Mary. For to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He said, meaning Jesus, Verily, I am a slave to Allah, and made me a prophet." Unquote. These are just some of the underpinning fundamental beliefs of Hamas, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, Hezbollah, Boko Haram, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the Muslim Brotherhood, all of whom practice the jihadi fundamentalism promoted and taught from the Quran. So, where is this leading? Are we heading into an apocalyptic storm of destruction? Stay with us as we address these questions on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our family to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Mike James. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Armor of God. We're glad you could join us on today's program. Now, we've done programs here before on the end times, but I want to take a different angle, a different approach on today's program. We're going to look at apocalypticism. Now, I know that's a mouthful, and I'm going to define that term in a moment, but I want to look at apocalypticism from the standpoint of how does Islamic apocalypticism compare to Christian apocalypticism? And you will find that there are some similarities but there are some glaring differences also. We're going to look at this question today, and to get started, I want to give you a definition of that big word I used moments ago, apocalypticism. Now, there are various definitions out there, but let me read you one. Apocalypticism, a doctrine distinguished by the expectation of an imminent end of the present temporal world the final destruction of the unrighteous in a purging holocaust engulfing the earth and the resurrection of the righteous to a purified world of bliss. Now if we look at this word apocalypse you will find that it comes from a Greek verb and what it means is to reveal or to uncover in some way. That's how we get the word revelation which is the last book of the Bible. It comes from this Greek word, apocalypse. And you will find in some Bibles that the last book of the Bible is actually called the apocalypse because of this connection to the Greek word. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to give you some general similarities between Christianity and Islam when we look at the end times. Just some generalities here. They both believe in some type of antichrist figure on the earth at the end time. They both believe that Jesus will be involved in the end time scenario. They both believe that major battles and war will occur in the Middle East. And they both believe that the apocalypse will lead to the dawning of a new age on this earth. And also they believe that the wicked in some form or fashion are going to be destroyed at this time of the end. 
Now I'm speaking in broad generalities here because when we get down to the details of those particular points that I just made, you're going to find that there are some glaring differences between Islam and Christianity when it comes to the end times and understanding what is going to happen in the end. Let me give you one example and we'll get to more a little bit later. One example is that Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the main player at the time of the end. Jesus returns and takes over rulership of this earth. He takes out the beast power, the antichrist power that are reigning and ruling on the earth and Jesus Christ is the one that leads his people into this new age, this kingdom of God on earth. When we turn to Islam, here's what we find. That Jesus is on the scene, but he's more like the lieutenant on the scene, and he is deferential to someone who's known as the Mahdi or the Redeemer as the Muslims understand him. This Mahdi figure is the main player. He takes out the Antichrist figure and leads his people into this new age. Now we're going to get to some more details between Christianity and Islam when we look at apocalypticism, but before I do that, what I'd like to do, as we always do on this program, we're going to offer you some free literature and also a free CD today. Now here's what we have available to you today. I'd like you to get the booklet, What Does the Bible Say About the Antichrist? Because what you will find is the Bible has a lot to say about the Antichrist when you compare it to the Islamic book, the Quran. The Quran is very limited in what it says about an Antichrist figure. Much of the information we get from Islam on the Antichrist comes from later writings within the Muslim tradition. But within Christianity, the source book of Christianity, the Bible, has a lot to say about the Antichrist. Get what does the Bible say about the Antichrist. We also want to offer you the free full-length sermon CD titled Apocalypticism. This sermon was delivered by one of our elders, Mr. Vance Stinson. This will give you a great amount of information on the subject that we are discussing today. To get both of these items free of charge, all you need to do is call toll-free 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. 8791 or you can visit our website www.cgi.org that's www.cgi.org you can also go to that website to learn more about our weekly sermon broadcast www.cgi.org again thanks for joining us on today's program we've been talking a little bit about apocalypticism and again, that's a big word. It merely means to unveil or to reveal something. It comes from a Greek verb. And when we look at our Bible, we get the word revelation from that Greek word apocalypse. Now we're comparing differences between the Islamic ideas on the apocalypse and the end time and the Christian ideas on the apocalypse and the end time. And you might wonder why there are similarities between these two traditions. What you will find, surprisingly to some, is that Muslims believe that the Bible does come from God, that it is God's Word. They do believe the Bible has been corrupted, so they look at the Quran as being the more significant book. But when it comes to the end times, the Quran does not have much to say about the end times. The Bible has much more to say about it. Much of the information that Muslims believe in about the end, about their apocalypse, comes from later writings and later traditions within Islam. 
So we're making a comparison today. There are similarities, there are differences, and we're going to delve into them today. Now, of course, being a minister of the Bible and, and God, I believe in what the Bible has to say about this. I believe there are some issues when you go to the Quran. I believe that Muhammad put that book together from traditions and stories he received from Jews and Christians who were traveling into Arabia and telling him stories about what was in the Bible. We've done other programs on that subject matter. I'm not going to go in that direction today. I'm going to strictly deal with the apocalypse, what happens in the end times, the differences between Christianity and Islam. Now, as we move forward, I need to give you a little background information here. Even within Christianity, there are differences within various Christian denominations and sects when they look at the end times. Let me give you a couple examples here. Some Christians believe in something called the rapture, where they're going to go to heaven for a period of time before they return to the earth. There are some Christians who think they're going to be in heaven for a number of years. Other for, others believe for a period of days or months before coming back to earth. The Seventh-day Adventists believe they will be in heaven for a thousand-year period before anybody comes back to earth. But those of us here at the Church of God International believe we will meet the Lord in the air and come directly back to planet earth as He sets up His kingdom here on earth. Now, when we go into Islam, we will find even within the various factions of Islam, for example, the Sunni faction, which is the largest faction within Islam, and the Shiite faction, which is the second largest faction, you will find differences of opinion when it comes to looking at the end times and the apocalypse. Let me give you one example from the Islamic tradition. Most of the Sunnis believe that the Mahdi figure is going to be a new historical figure that comes on the scene at the end time. Now you might say, well, why wouldn't he be a new historical figure? That would seem obvious. Well, this is why. When you look at the, Sunni, the Shiite tradition, what the Shiites say about the Mahdi is that the Mahdi was actually the twelfth Imam in the line of Ali. Now who was Ali? Ali was the son-in-law and cousin of Muhammad. And Shiites believe that that is the line that should have the leadership within Islam. That caused the break with the Sunni faction because they don't agree with that. Now, here's what the Shiites believe about this twelfth Imam. The twelfth Imam came on the scene in about the 900s AD. So he was a real historical figure. But the Shiites believe that the twelfth Imam has been in hiding all of this time. That God has put him away in some state of suspended animation and he is going to come back on the scene and take over this world when this Antichrist figure comes on the scene. So as you can see, even within the traditions of Christianity and Islam, there are diverse opinions on what exactly is going to take place in the end. Now in the remainder of this program, what I'd like to do, I'd like to give you some of the major signs that the Muslim tradition believes about the end time and then we're going to relate those major signs to what Christianity says. Does Christianity agree on those things? And if not, how is Christianity different on those things? So here's what we're going to do. Let's start with the Islamic side of things and let's talk about the major signs they see at the end time. One of these, of course, is the false messiah or the antichrist figure. And what they say about this individual is that he's going to have one eye. So that is something that's unique, a little bit different about what they say about this false messiah or antichrist. He's also going to lead many people astray. Another point that they make is Jesus will be on the scene. Jesus is going to come back when the Antichrist comes on the scene, Jesus is going to try to battle against this Antichrist figure, but he will need the help of the Mahdi to overcome this figure. 
The Muslims also, interestingly enough, mention two vicious tribes that will be rampaging on the earth at the end time. These tribes are known as Gog and Magog. Now that will be familiar to some Christians if they read their Bible, and I'm going to get to that in a, in a little bit. Allah will eventually wipe out Gog and Magog, but they will do some damage to the believers in Allah when they are rampaging on the earth at the end time. The Muslims also believe that a major sign at the end time will be a giant black cloud of smoke that will be permeating throughout the earth when the end time apocalypse is taking place. The Muslims do mention a beast. They talk about a beast coming up out of the ground and talking to people that this will take place during the end time. And here's another interesting detail. They believe that Mecca will be attacked and the Kaaba, the giant black rock in Mecca where Muslims go on their Hajj or pilgrimage to touch it, that this will be destroyed during the end time scenario within the Muslim tradition. Now let's look at those major points that the Muslims make and let's see how Christianity deals with those major points. Christianity does talk about an Antichrist figure, but Christianity also says there will be many false messiahs coming on the scene in the lead up to the end times. There will be a major figure, but there will be other false messiahs running about in this time frame. They do talk about Jesus, of course, in the Christian tradition, but Jesus is the main figure. There is no other figure that is helping Jesus do what Jesus does. He does have a host from heaven coming with him, but there's not a significant figure like the Muslims have with this Mahdi or this Redeemer character. You will also find within Christianity the mention of the two witnesses at the end time who precede Jesus coming on the scene. So that is a little bit different also. Gog and Magog are mentioned in the Bible. And when you look at it, there is some diverse opinion about them within Christianity. Some within Christianity believe that Gog and Magog will be warring against the good forces before Christ returns and also at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ. There are others who believe that Gog and Magog come on the scene at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth. And so there are some different opinions on that particular matter. Another point to make is over in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, listen to what it says. Compare this to what I said about the Muslims and their black cloud of smoke. Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So there is a darkening of the sun. The moon is not giving light, which will lead to a darkness of some sort on the earth, which is similar to this idea of a dark cloud that the Muslims speak about at the end time. Now when we turn in our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 13, we also find something else that's a little bit different. In Revelation 13, in verse 1, it begins to talk about this beast. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now these animals that being, are being described are symbols, and this symbol of the dragon represents Satan the devil. Satan is likened to a dragon, and he is going to give power to this beast who is rampaging upon the earth at the end time. It says in verse 4 that they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast. 
And so we know there's going to be some type of adulation to this beast power upon the earth. It's a powerful political force, an economic force that is going to be con in control of the world system at this time. Now, interestingly enough, if we drop down in chapter 13 of Revelation, we read about another beast in verse 11 of Revelation 13. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now many believe that this second beast has some religious connection. He's going to have some influence in that arena. But notice that there are two beasts mentioned here, one coming from the sea, one coming from the earth. When we look at the Muslim tradition, they talk about that one beast coming from up out of the ground. So again, there's some differences there between what the Bible has to say about the beast and what the Muslims believe about this beast power. Another thing that is important is the fact that Mecca is not mentioned in the book of Revelation. It is not the locus where things are happening when the end times occur. Jerusalem is the locus, and we find in Luke chapter 21 some information that will back me up on that. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 20, we're going to read the following scripture. Luke 21, 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So when Jerusalem is surrounded by armies, it's close to the end. We need to look at that rather than the idea that things are going to be happening around Mecca. Now, in looking at these two different viewpoints, we see major differences between whether or not Jesus is a major player or not, we see differences between the role that Jesus is going to play in the end time. And we see a lot of this focus around Jesus because Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is one of the major differences between Islam and Christianity. It's a battle over who and what Jesus was. Muslim tradition tells us that Jesus is not the Son of God, that there is no Son of God, there cannot be a Son of God, there is only one God and He is Allah. Christianity says no way, that is not the answer. There is a Son of God, it is Jesus Christ, He is the Messiah, He is very God. We can read in John chapter 1, and I'm going to turn there right now, and there are other places in the Bible where you find out who Jesus Christ is. But in John chapter 1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, as you read further down into this chapter of John, you find out who this Word is. This Word was Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. Now, is there a problem for those who don't believe that Jesus is God? Yes, and I hope that if you do have Muslim friends, that you get them this type of information, help them understand what the differences are. Because when we turn over to 1 John, I want to give you one more important scripture here in this discussion. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, I want to read something to you. Now listen carefully to what it says. 1 John chapter 2 beginning in verse 18. Little children, it is the last time and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? Get this. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. 
And as I told you before, Islam denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says that people that deny this are against God, are anti-Christ. We need to let our Muslim friends know about this information from the Bible. We need to make them aware of this truth and help them understand where the Quran came from, that the Bible came hundreds of years before the Quran was put, in, put together. Scholars tell us Muhammad got many of his ideas and stories that he put into the Quran from biblical traditions, from apocryphal traditions that come from Judaism and Christianity. It's important to make our Muslim friends aware of that and help them understand the truth of the Bible as we compare it with what they are espousing about Islam and what it has to say. We've looked at the end times today to show you that difference between Christianity and Islam, but let me assure you there are numerous other differences between these two great religions in the world today. Do your research, find out what these differences are, because it's very important to understand the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. There is no other road to salvation. And any Muslims listening to this program today, I want you to find out, research your Koran, research Islam, and you will find there are some issues when you begin to research and see if your answers to that research stacks up against what you begin to learn when you look at this question. Now again, I want you to please get that literature and that CD that we're offering on today's program. I want you to get that booklet titled, What Does the Bible Say About the Antichrist? The Bible speaks about this subject more so than the Quran. You don't get a lot of information within the Quran about this Antichrist figure. Get this booklet, it will help you make sense of the various symbols that we read about in the book of Revelation. We also want you to get the free sermon CD titled Apocalypticism. Learn what this time frame is all about. What is going to happen in the end times. Get the CD and the booklet by calling 1-888-578-8791. You can also get this information by going to our website www.cgi.org. Call 1-888-578-8791 or visit our website to order www.cgi.org. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us on today's edition of the Armor of God. Put on that whole armor of God so you can stand in that evil day. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas, 75701, or call toll-free at 1-888-578-8791, or call one 939 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org, or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.